First things first, you're actually going to disconnect the battery. And the reason for doing this is because of the airbag on the steering wheel. You don't want that to go off because it is an explosive. So any sort of like static or electricity of any kind will cause it to go off. And you don't want any accidents when you're trying to unplug it. Because as I say, it is an explosive. So unplug your battery. And I mean, people say you should leave it an hour. But once it's unplugged, it's practically dead. I mean, what I like to do is I like to touch it to earth just to make sure it's completely ground out and discharges everything like that so now we know that the car is completely completely safe and this is where it gets fun on the back of the wheel there is two 5.5 mil nuts no bolts you have to undo so if you rotate the wheel you can see it just there and you can't actually see it because it's behind you so i recommend using a phone camera or something like that and you're just gonna undo that with a 5.5 mil it's really awkward to do this is so Try and get that on, like so, and then loosen it off. And then now that one's loosened, rotate the wheel, and you'll find the other side one. So, once those two 5.5mm bolts at the back are undone, all you have to do is pull it off, like so. And then you'll find the little wire on the back there, which you have to unplug like so and that is the airbag removed now put this down somewhere where you're not going to blow yourself up in an accident um yeah so airbags are basically an explosive so you know and they do have a life um which is normally about 10 to 15 years you can see this one tells you to dispose it before 2013 which was about what eight years ago so this airbag's eight years out of date <laughs> that's fine moving on Next up is unplug the horn buttons, like so. You can see obviously there's no power, the, you know, we've unplugged the battery, they're not going to do anything. And then 15 mil, and crack this nut off. Actually, it might be ideal to put the steering off on to do this. So, key out, and then lock the wheel. Oh, that is tight, isn't it? Why is that so tight? There you go. And then you can just loosen that off. Like so, pull the nut off, don't bolt, don't lose that. And then you're obviously gonna need to take the steering lock off again. So you can now wiggle the wheel off. Now if it won't come off, what I recommend doing is putting the bolt back on a few threads and just giving it a few good tugs. The reason you put the bolt back on is so you don't smack yourself in the face when it comes off. Now on the back you'll see the clock spring, be careful you don't pull this apart and break it. And you basically just need to like, pull the whole lot out really. So that's the clock spring, squib, whatever you want to call it. Airbag squib. It does basically your airbag. Um, it's basically a wire that goes inside and then loops back and forwards, back and forwards, back and forwards. And that basically allows your wheel to turn full direction without any wires twisting up and getting tangled or anything like that. That's what the squib does. Now, the actual airbag squib itself doesn't unplug over here like you'd think. It actually unplugs further back. If you put your hand up behind the steering cowling, and you can just about do that, you'll find the plug. Just unplug that and you should be able to remove the whole lot. In fact, I think because of how tight it is, we might actually have to drop this down, which is only four bolts, so that's fine. But we'll see how we get on. The answer is yes. We did have to remove the lower plastic. Well, that's not a problem. It is only four Torx 20 screws. So once it's removed, you'll find the cable is actually tucked inside of here. So just clip this back together now. I've got the cable out of it and you can see it's already unplugged. So now I just need to pull this through. I don't know if we can get it behind there actually, or do I need to remove the Pat's ring? Yeah, I think I'll just about squeeze that behind there. I'll do it in a second when I've got both hands free. But actually I've just noticed this wire needs to tuck back inside of there. So I'll do that now. Like that. Oh, my camera's pointing on the floor. I apologise for that. There we go. Boom. So, I think I just need to... Can I get it off without taking the Pat's ring off? It's probably best to, isn't it, so I don't break it. That is everything back together and the airbag squib off. And you can see on these cars, the squib is... Or the clock spring, whatever you want to call it, is purely for the airbag. So, on the back, you've actually got these sort of 
metal plates here that spin around and push against these points here. And they are what do the horn. So the airbag needs a good reliable connection. So that is using a clock spring, which is just a direct wire link between one and two points. The horn, it's not so matter if it's not an absolute perfect connection. As long as power can flow, the horn will work, you know. So they just use that contact ring on the back that just spins round. But with the airbag, you need it to be a constant, perfect connection and nothing less. So that's why they have to use a squib clock spring on the airbag, whereas on the horn, it doesn't matter. Here's the new wheel. I'm led to believe this is a Mark V XR3i steering wheel. I might be wrong, someone correct me if I am, but I believe it's an XR3i steering wheel from a Mark V. It's a Mark V steering wheel, but I, I don't know what, I, I think it's an XR3i. So, as you can see, this one doesn't have an airbag. So, what we've got, we haven't got an airbag squib, we've just got the contact rings at the back. So this now, just goes straight on there and bolts up. It's as simple as that. So there's that bolt done up. Wheels on, perfect. So the last thing to do is we've got these two connections which are for the horn button. So we just plug them onto the button. Doesn't matter which one goes where. So they're just spade terminals. So I'm trying to do this one handed and it's not really working. There we go. There's one plug. Like so. And There's the other plug, like so. And now, this should, like so, boom, fitted. Now, fingers crossed, if we reconnect this battery, the horn shouldn't start blaring. If it does, then there's a problem with the contact. But otherwise, the car now has power. The horn isn't constantly going. So let's tighten that back up done put the cover back on done close the bonnet and let's go and check everything out so we're now back in the car the steering wheel's fitted does the horn work yes it does now when we switch the ignition on what's going to happen is an airbag light's going to start flashing on the dashboard because we've removed the airbag now technically speaking for an mot that airbag light should come on and then go out if it doesn't come on at all, or it is on and indicating there's a fault in the system, because there's no airbags that's gonna come on and say there's a fault, it's an MOT failure. So technically speaking, because it has to come on and go out, you can't just remove the bulb. But then, since this car's now got no airbags, there's no need for an airbag light. So we can just remove that and there'll be no problem. Um, just disable the airbag system altogether is what we've done because there's no airbag there. The, the, the car has one airbag which is on the steering wheel. It's not there anymore. So when we turn the ignition on, airbag light's gonna come on and it'll start flashing to tell us that there's no airbag. Like that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm, I'm gonna remove that bulb at some point, um, but for now I'll just live with that as being the case and um, yeah, so I'll just set up my radio now because I've obviously took off the battery and it's reset everything and then we'll go for a little drive. 